Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Corpus HD. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are checking out this 2018 Chevy Malibu. This one belongs to my stepfather, and it's a company car. And I'm gonna be, and we actually have a replacement car coming for this car. And I said, since we have a new replacement coming for it, I thought I might as well go ahead and review it now before it goes. So this will probably be the very last video you guys will ever see featuring the Malibu. So anyway, without further ado, let's go get straight on to the review. The car is finished off in Summit White, and it's definitely one of the best looking whites I've seen. The car is powered by a 1.5 liter inline 4 cylinder with 160 horsepower at 5700 RPMs and 184 pound feet of torque at 7500 RPMs. And with that 4 cylinder front wheel drive, you can expect 0 to 60 in 8.2 seconds with a top speed of 127 miles an hour. Now, I'm not talking about fuel economy, this car has a fuel capacity of 15.8 gallons, and with that 15.8 gallon fuel tank, you can expect 29 miles per gallon in the city and 36 out on the highway. And this car weighs 3,126 pounds. And whenever we first got this car, we actually got this car brand new with only with only a, less with less than 10 miles on it. So this car, and ever since we got it, we got we put about 100,000 miles on this car, which is about on average is what most people would put on a car like this. And then of course we move under the hood where you can clearly see the 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine with 160 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. And this car, this engine bay does not actually look too bad. As you can see, it has Ecotech on the center of it there. And it's, it's actually a rather nice looking engine. You know, it ain't the best, best looking engine. It's about what, like a couple kind of engine that you would expect from a car from this era. But it still looks pretty, pretty cool. And of course, you also got your vehicle infra emission control information on the top. And we also, got a, we also got a panel on the back that actually has a bunch of different warning labels. And one crazy thing that I did notice is that this car does actually have two vents on it. Well, of course, you also got you got one right on the driver's side door panel area, just like what you would expect. You got one on the driver's side door panel right there. If I can get it on camera, right there. It won't go on camera. There we go. We got we got that vent. Then there's also one in the engine bay, right at the very very back. Never seen that before with a car that actually has two vents on it. Interesting. Of course, you got where your windshield wiper is, where your windshield wiper goes, right there. You also got where you put your engine oil, just like every other car, that's where you put your engine oil. Now, there really isn't that. That's pretty much all there is to talk about with the engine bay. And, of course, you put it down just like every other engine. Of course, we need to access the hood. Now, to open up the hood, look on the driver's side door panel underneath the steering wheel of course you press that pull that lever which actually pops up in the hood then after all you guys simply do is pull this little yellow tab to the right and then of course you can lift up the hood but unlike every other engine where the pop that goes up automatically and stays put without having to use a hood prop this one does have a hood prop i'm demonstrating how it pops how you how you open it with the with the uh, b-roll now so you guys can see it's it's pretty standard like what you expect from any other car now almost every car from this era has a has a hood prop has a hood that can automatically stay up without having to use a hood prop. But sadly, this one has does come with a hood prop. Unfortunately, I'm not sure about the newer ones, but this one sadly does come with a hood prop. But even with the engine up, it still does look pretty neat. Now let's go and talk about badging. I'll be going popping up some B rolls to talk about where all the badging is. We got the Malibu badge on the left side of the trunk. And then of course we also got the LT badge which stands for luxury touring on the right side of the trunk. We also got the Chevrolet logo right in the middle of the trunk. We also got the Malibu logo which, which goes on the side. And then of course we also have a Chevrolet badge located in the center of the grill. And one problem really nobody really realizes because you look in the headlight, look very, very closely and zoom in, you actually see a little tiny Chevy badge. Really cool. Then you also have the same exact thing on the rear lights. This one's a bit harder to see, but if you look very carefully in the rear lights, you will see a very small, faint Chevy badge in there. It looks really, really and cool. And then, of course, you also got the antenna, which sticks up like a shark fin on the top. That's pretty much on every new car today. Talk about the Chevy Malibu without talking about the key. Here's what the key looks like. It's just like any any other standard Chevrolet key that you would pick up if you went to go to the... If you went to the dealership to pick up a Camaro, you would get the exact same engine, or the exact same key fob, as well as the Malibu Equinox. This is the exact same engine, this is the exact same key that goes with pretty much every Chevrolet that came out during this time. You also got the lock and unlock buttons on the top. You double click the lock button to fully lock it. And of course, you double tap to unlock all engines, and also see all the lights turn on, which look pretty cool. And then you also got the um, this button here. If you actually double tap the lock button twice, this is pretty much on every other car. If you double tap the lock button twice, then hold down the arrow. 
the car will actually start with the remote. The thing is that that's pretty much in every single car today. And of course, you could turn it off the same way just by double clicking the unlock button and hold down the same button. You could turn it off the exact same way as well. And then, of course, you can also pop up the trunk with the key fob just by simply double tapping the top bottom left button. And then, of course, you also got the panic button down here at the bottom, which I'm not going to press because everybody pretty much knows what the panic button does. Then you flip it over to the back, and of course, you got the Chevrolet logo, a bit of a, um, you also got a QR code on the back, and then you also have a um, little loop where you can put it on a key ring and stuff like that. So that's pretty much the, Chev the Chevrolet Malibu key fob. By the way, I actually went over the, this exact same key fob with my, 20, with my 2019 Chevy Camaro SS review. If you guys have not yet seen that, I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below so you guys can go check it out, or as a card in the top right corner. And of course, we cannot forget to talk about the trunk and the parking sensors. I've already shown you guys the first way to open up the trunk. There's also another way to open up a trunk from this car as well. Because of course, you can press this little button underneath here to turn it on as well. And inside of the trunk, and you will see, it is actually pretty roomy. As you can see, it's about, don't, don't please don't mind it being dirty, because this is my stepfather's work car, and so, and my company car, so he takes it on work job sites all the time, so it's pretty, pretty dirty in here. And so, yeah, the interior of the trunk is actually pretty good, and you can make it even bigger by simply pressing, or pulling this latch right here, which of course, you pull this latch right here, and that latch actually folds down the back seats. Of course, you lift up this panel down here from the, from the underneath here, and of course, well, there's your spare tire, if you're wondering what the spare tire of this car looks like. Pretty, and it's pretty cool how you can actually see all the inner workings inside the trunk. Like, you can actually see where the seat connects to the uh, to this latch, which is pretty neat. You also got a light up here to, of course, light up everything that's inside of your trunk. That is pretty much everything about the trunk. Now, for the probably the longest part of the video, we're going to be talking about all of the interior quirks. But before I move on back onto the interior, I think we should get a listen to the exhaust note. Now, this car does not have a sport exhaust or any, it's not like a sports car like my car or all the other cars that we have. This is just a regular daily driver. So it actually does not have an, it actually does not have a true exhaust pipe. It does have one, but except that it's located underneath the car. So whenever I actually film the exhaust video, I'm actually going to be putting the, my phone underneath the car and the wind's going to be blowing on it. But anyway, if you guys want to know what the exhaust sounds like, well, here you go. And of course we cannot forget to talk about the lighting. Let's go and talk about the lighting now. So here are the turn signals of the car, which look really, really cool. Look really, really sporty and they're at the perfect position. And here we also got daytime running lights as well as the regular headlights. And then of course here are we flashing on and off the high beams. Of course here are the rear brake lights as well as the rear rear lights. Then here we got the rear turn signals which look really really sick as well. Then of course here we got the reverse lights. That's pretty much all of the noteworthy features on the exterior of the 2018 Chevy Malibu. It's actually a pretty, it's like it's pretty um, standard looking from the exterior. It's not like all sporty and all any chance. It, um, the thing is it actually is, you look at it from the front end, it is a pretty stealthy looking car. It's not, I mean it ain't like the most like the most uh, sporty, as you can see. It looks about like every other normal car today, so there isn't really that much to talk about on the exterior of the car. Anyway, now we should go ahead and move on to the interior of the car. All right, now we go ahead and move on to the interior of the, 20, the 2018 Chevy Malibu, and as you can see, it is a pretty nice place to be. Hey, like, of course, everything is not the highest quality. We've got plastic all over the place. The steering wheel is leather, though. That's actually pretty cool to see. This thing is, though, the center of the steering wheel is plastic. The gear lever does have a leather band around it and also, and, and also aluminum trim as well. But, of course, everything else is plastic. And then, of course, to start up the car is just like a really cool... You gotta, you, I got to simply press the big start-stop button on the side like you're starting a fighter jet. And then, of course, the car then fires in to life and i must say this interior still does look pretty nice i'm not gonna lie the coolest part is looking at that gauge cluster the gauge cluster is by far the coolest part about that car of course you got the tachometer on the left the speedometer on the right the temperature gauge on the left from top right and of course the fuel gauge on the on the top left let's go start talking about the screen now everything on the screen can be adjusted by this 
center by the on the right panel on the steering wheel has an arrow up to the left right and then also down with a check mark inside of it and i must say the center screen is actually pretty quality it's actually at 60 fps as you can see as i as i action in and out of it it actually does have pretty good quality inside of this center screen which is actually really this is actually surprisingly i think even the um, the the sf that we used to have did not have that the corvette c7 i reviewed did not have that i mean this is literally the best quality uh like infotainment system that I've ever seen in my life and of course let's go to the different options first we're going to let's go and start scrolling up to info now info is just everything that you currently see displayed right here like it lets you know your fuel remaining and miles it also lets you know your current mileage this one has 97,289 miles and it also actually shows a picture with how much gas is is remaining as well as you can see it says what, like what actual information setting you're on actually lets you know what direction you're going and of course what gear you're in but that's not all that you can find inside of this little center screen of course if you press up and down on the arrow key you can actually scroll through different options here you actually got your trip um it actually lets you know everything about your trip it lets, like it actually lets you know your um, trip odometer it actually lets you know how many miles you put on during your trip and ever since we've reset the trip odometer we've put 35,000 miles on this car so we have not reset the third the trip odometer after about 35,000 miles and of course it also lets you know your average fuel economy down at the bottom as well and then of course it also lets you know how much gas you still have remaining as well with a nice little picture of a curvy road which i don't think people are going to really want to drive this car on a curvy road scroll up one more and of course it actually just lets you know your speed that you're going just your speed and nothing else let's go ahead and go back to the section that it was on before and go down one more and here it actually lets you know your oil life left as you can see it says how much, how much oil you got remaining scroll down one more time and then you can actually see your tire pressure and actually how much tire pressure you got with also displaying your current mileage down at the bottom as well it actually lets you know what psi each tire is on and then of course you scroll down one more and then of course you got your fuel you actually got your 50 mile fuel economy range so as you can see your best the best fuel economy has ever been put on this car was 38.7 miles to the gallon which is actually not too bad and also the average is usually at 29.9 and of course you also let you know your miles per gallon on the left as well and of course with a little picture of a battery on it and that's pretty much all the different information about the info part of the center screen i'm just going to, if i go and click over to the left it's going to go down to audio and of course this is where your radio is it'll actually let you know all your radios but you can of course you can change the radio station through here as well you like you can actually choose the different radio area or area radio media am fm sxm and pretty much what you would get of course it feels me i go for fm one thing i do like about this car is actually i had something i never even knew about the car until i spent more time with it you can actually adjust the temperature like you can actually change the radio station from inside the car and also the volume from inside the car there's actually little tiny paddles on the on both sides of the steering wheel and there's two there's four of them there's two on both sides the right section of the car that actually changes the volume as you see as i press the up as i press up on it the volume actually gets higher and higher. As you can see, I'm, obviously I'm not gonna raise it up too high, but of course you can also raise it up like that from the from the uh, steering wheel. And then of course with the left one, there's where you can actually change your radio station. So this is there are just a couple of different ways that you can actually adjust the radio inside of this car. I'm gonna put it on 106.5. Of course you scroll over one more time and here's you can actually access your favorite radio stations as you can see i got all of my favorite radio stations already listed on here as well that's how, that's how you can access your favorites and that's pretty much all of the radio settings on the inside of this car and if i want to click over to the left one more time you can actually access your phone and of course you can actually connect the phone to it and use your phone just like normal that's pretty much like we've seen every other car You've got navigation and here's where you can here's all the fun stuff happens about navigation like trips like trip odometers and stuff i'll go and get into that more here now here you can actually set a location from this area that area that honor goes to the center screen which i will get more into here in just a few minutes and if you actually click right on this you can actually cancel your guidance so you can actually completely cancel your route but um, from this button right here and then of course you click up to the right again and here you can actually turn on and off voice prompt right here where it actually plays voices wherever you do anything now we still have one more option we scroll over to the left again we go down to options now this is where all the fun stuff happens here's all your information pages you'll see here's where you can actually turn on and off a speed warning now 
from the center screen, you can actually set a speed that you want to let that you want the car to let you know that you're speeding, and you can actually turn that on here, where, it, where whenever you go over that certain speed, the car will actually beep at you, which is a pretty pretty nice nice touch. Now let's go ahead and move on to the left control section of the steering wheel now what the middle one does that's actually a collision alert system now whenever you're on like close to him hitting something it'll actually beep at you or let's just let you know hey you're getting a bit too close for a collision it actually it'll actually then send multiple beeps to you whenever you're driving saying oh uh, uh oh you got to slow down it's a kind of an annoying thing but you can also set this you can also set it to be however close you want it to be so if you just keep pressing this button here as you can see, it pops up again. Press, press it again. You could actually lower. You can actually lower it. So you can actually choose do three different sections of collision alert. So you, if you want to make it alert you when you're ever you're very very close, just you can set it to the one section. If you want, if you want it to let you know when you're a little bit closer, you can just set it to two. And of course, the farthest is of course three. And I love that graphic that actually pops up. It has a car with another car in front of it. With another car in front, my camera is acting so weird today. With also like a little tiny like firecracker on top, it's a really interesting thing to look at. It's kind of it's kind of cool in my opinion as well. And of course, and also what the right button does, that's actually the adaptive cruise control. So you can actually turn on the adaptive cruise control, and you can actually set what speed you want it to go at. So like let's say if I'm going 40 or 60 miles an hour, whenever you're going 60 miles an hour, press this button right there. And then it'll actually stay at 60 miles an hour the whole entire time. That's pretty much like what every other car has. I mean, dang, my Camaro, which is a 1997, it also has that, which is kind of cool. And then, of course, you also got this button down here on the left. Now, what that does, let's say if I set a speed to 60 miles an hour, you can actually disengage cruise control without actually having to erase the memory that you set in, like, with speed you go. So, you can actually turn it off. You can actually turn off the speed, can, the, um, um, cruise control the adaptive cruise control without actually having to you know set it so now here's what these two buttons do if you press and release this set button right here the desired set speed briefly appears in the instrument cluster remove your foot from the accelerator pedal and also the cruise control indicator on the instrument cluster turns green after the control has been set to the desired speed and also if the cruise control is set at a desired speed and then the brakes are applied cruise control is disengaged and with erasing the set speed memory from the memory once the vehicle speed reaches about 40 kilometers an hour or more briefly press the RES button right here then the vehicle returns to its previous set speed which is a really really neat feature then of course now we move now from navigation we click down we go one more down we now we go down the options now here's where everything goes on the first thing of our option you'll see you'll see the info pages speed warning and then also units here is where you can actually change like your metric units you can change it from US to metric as you can see, so now it'll actually, now the speedo will actually read up to 160 kilometers an hour instead of miles an hour. See, as you change it, see, as you change it, it'll actually change from kilometers an hour to miles per hour down here. If I, now, if I go back again here, and then I go down to metric, and if I, now if I scroll up to metric, it actually then changes from miles an hour to kilometers an hour, which is a really, really neat, and of course, you can then exit from it as well. And also, as you change it, it also lets you know. Met it also says metric on the front front here, and as well as the U.S. metrics. If I'm going, it's pretty hard to. There we go. That's pretty neat. So now we move on to the info pages. Now this is where you can pretty much talk, talk about active info pages, and now you can actually discuss everything that you want to be displayed. You can actually adjust through here, where you can actually, actually let you know, like whatever one you click on here. That's all what pops up on the main one. And now that's pretty much everything inside of this little tiny center screen. Another thing I do like about the tachometer, it just looks so cool whenever you rev it. Ah, oh, that tachometer is just so freaking cool. This car, it does not actually have too bad of a sound coming that comes out of it. It's actually a pretty nice car to actually be inside of. Very easy to rev. It is pretty easy to rev. I don't have to, I can barely, the thing is if I barely, just barely tap it, it only goes a little bit. You have to, you have to like floor it for it to really get up there high. By the way, if it seems like I'm reading directly from the owner's manual, 
it is. <laughs> Speaking of the owner's manual, here's what the owner's manual looks like. This is what I've been using to read through most of the instructions about this car. It actually comes with two. Of course, you actually, actually have your main, uh, you actually got your main owner's manual for the 2018 Malibu. And then, of course, you also got your MyLink inf infotainable manual, if I'm saying that right. That's a weird word. I've never seen that word before. It talks about all your MyLink and stuff like that. And, of course, whenever I do read some stuff, I am using the owner's manual at some point. Let's go ahead and now move into the center control area. So now, of course, you've got your gear lever right here. You can use it to adjust the different gears. And actually, on top of the gear lever, you will actually see a plus and also a minus. So now what this actually does, whenever you actually put the gear lever into L, as you can see, it actually shows in here L1. So now what that is pretty much is, it's kind of like a little manual shifting mode. So now whenever you're in this mode, all you got to simply do is press up on this plus button here and it actually goes up into different gears. This is a six speed gearbox and you can actually adjust it like this as well. Of course, you got your minus button. Now, whenever I drove the Chevy Impala, I actually used this feature and it's actually a really, really cool feature to use. If it, like, it isn't like a true manual car, but it's still really, really fun to drive it whenever you do use it. So it's really pretty cool. Over here, you got your window controls, which are pretty simple. They work just like any other window controls. You push all four of them down and then all four windows roll up at the exact same time. That's just like in every single other car. You also got your mirror controls right here. You simply click on the left, on the left mirror button, then a little light turns on. Then of course you can use this little dial to adjust the mirrors wherever you want them. Of course, you click the right one to actually adjust the right mirror, which is kind of hard to see. But as you can see, as I adjust it, the mirror moves ever so slightly. Because this car is so old, this one is a little bit broken. And then, of course, whenever you're done, all you gotta simply do is just simply de-click de that. And of course, I mean, it's just, just like every other car, so there's really no point in featuring it. You also got the unlock and unlock buttons, which work just like any other car, so I'm not going to go into those. Door handle is just like any other car, so of course I'm not going to go into that either. I guess we can also talk about the the armrest, which the armrest does feel pretty good. It's nice and comfy, so you can do one of these while you're driving, which is a really, really nice. And I which talking about driving, sadly guys, I will not be able to drive this car for you guys today. So as, as I said, this is my stepfather's company car, and he only likes to hit there. there. His boss only lets a select few amount of different people you know, actually sit inside and actually drive this car. So sadly, I will cannot drive it, but that's still perfectly fine. Hopefully somebody will actually offer to let me review one of their, um, drive one of theirs one day. So whenever I can, I'll update and I'll actually post the driving experience of this car. Down here, you also got your headlight controls. Now here is where you can actually turn on and off the automatic lights. Of course, you turn them back on, just simply pressing it down. As you can see, as I scroll through this, the lights, I can turn off, press it over to the left, and that turns on the automatic lights, and also an information, and also a um, screen actually pops up, as you can see. A little information actually pops up on here, so it's telling you that the automatic lights are turned off. Then, of course, you click it over one more time, and that turns back on the lights with that information displayed on the center screen. Of course, you turn it over one more time, and that turns on the main headlights, and then the very final option, of course, twitch it over one more time, that turns on the brights. Moving more throughout the, throughout this car, we, of course, we also got the turn signal stock, which actually works just like any other turn signal stock, as you can see. As they work, they, those work literally just like any other one. You turn on the brights this way as well. You turn it over towards you, and that just flashes them like that. And then, of course, you hook it over to the front, and that keeps it on. Just, that's, pretty, that's pretty much just like every other car. This car does have four climate control on um, four climate control vents on the front seat, but of course I'm not going to go into those because they work just like every single other climate control vent, so I'm not going to go into those. One thing I will say about this car, though, that is that the steering is so light. The steering is literally the lightest steering I think I have ever felt in my life, and I've driven a Chevy Mount, a Chevy a brand new Chevy Impala, and I must say the steering does feel much much better than a new Impala. Speaking of the steering wheel, we got a Chevrolet logo in the center of the steering wheel, which looks pretty cool. On the left side of the steering wheel, you also have your, that's, you also have your cruise control button. That button right there turns on cruise control. Up here at the very, very top, there looks like a button, but you try to click it and nothing happens. This car does have a blank switch on the top, which is one thing I do not like. 
but because it makes it, it it just kind of throws you off I mean if you're going to put not put anything there just don't put something there I think they tried to do it to make it match both sides because this car does have two buttons on the top side and they uh, both do something but this side does not sadly but that's still perfectly fine because uh, think things I still think it's a bit of a gimmick I guess you can say so now with this button down here is that's actually a parking assist button so now whenever you're reversing it actually beeps at you to let you know whenever like how close you are to something like if i'm going to pop it in reverse with it on i'm going to go and put something back there and i'll go and show you guys an example of that that was everything about the backup camera and everything like that so now let's go ahead and now move more into the center control stack and that's what that button does now of course what this button right here is that turns on and off traction control and of course this car does also have two cup holders it actually has four cup holders in total well really four up here just up here in the front seat you actually got two right here then you also got one on both door panels and speaking of storage here's a little tiny storage compartment right behind the door panel controls as well as one right underneath that storage panel then you also got a cool really rather large storage panel right here in front of that and then you also of course you got some the exact same setup on the, on the passenger door as well we'll talk about the glove box glove box is about regular size and about the size of any other regular glove box so that's nothing interesting in that side of this glove box and then of course we also got the center the center console um, storage area this thing is rather large this is actually one of the red things I can actually fit the whole owner's manual inside of this I can actually fit both manuals inside of it plus a whole lot more so this is actually a, this is actually one of if not the largest center console i think i've ever seen in any car i have reviewed a ford f-150 which it is a bit bigger than this but like sedan wise this is about the biggest one i've ever i've actually ever seen more storage inside here yes you got a little tiny center storage pocket in here which this one's weirdly can actually be removed it's pretty hard to do but you can actually remove it I have no idea why this would actually be used or actually be removed, but you can do it. Let's go ahead and start talking about these controls here, the all the center control area. So now this body, this, this screen is touch screen, but I'll move on to the touch screen stuff a little bit later on. <laughs> if you go press the home button, you can actually of course see all your different home from information like audio, phone, protection, which I'll get to that a little bit later on, OnStar Nav, apps, OnStar, text, and also settings. If you actually press this next button here, you can also got, got the My Chevrolet app. We'll get to that here in a second. But if you actually scroll down here, you can actually change what radio station that you want through here as well. That's just like any other car. You press back, and of course, that actually cancels all that. Talking more on the screen, as you can actually see, it actually lets you know what, what the temperature is outside, also what time it is. As you can see, it is pretty late outside. It is dark, but I'm gonna, that's because I, I didn't realize how much time I had, but I, the new car will be here soon, and I don't remember how long it's actually going to be till it gets here, and I want to go ahead and get the review of this car done before that car gets here, so if you guys know what I mean. Of course, you also have your hazard light buttons, that turns on the hazard lights, and it actually lets you know on the, on the gauge cluster that the, light, that the hazard lights are on, just like any other car. You also got your... Um, you also got your air conditioning as well. That's out here is actually the um, front windshield defroster. And of course, you also got the rear windshield defroster as well. You also got the climate control vents control section right here that controls this temperature. As you can see, and then of course, you also got your temperature right down here as well. You also got your AC button as well. Then you also got your circulation button as well. As you can see now here is actually a really really weird and actually kind of actually kind of funky looking um, center for front area here so now what here actually does this actually lets you know whether you want the air to come out but it's so cool how it actually shows like as it actually shows it as like a little person which is really neat of course that you press this button right here that makes it face towards the seat press the forward arrow and that makes it come out here and then you also just got the regular windshield defroster right here which is really really cool first also up here you also got the volume dial to adjust the volume as you can see that adjusts the volume and yes i am sadly having to rush it but yes that's pretty much all of the center controls now we move on to the big center screen this is where all of the more important information is displayed of course you go to audio which is this touch screen here you can actually of course browse through all of your different radio stations and stuff like that it's all controlled 
it's actually pretty really really responsive to the touch as you can see as I press different things it is really responsive to the touch which is one thing which is one thing that should be good if you actually go to tone settings as well as under here you can actually adjust the bass mid-range and treble through this way as well and also you can actually adjust what you like let's say if you turn on a different category of music and stuff you can actually adjust what all like you can actually adjust different parts as well if you go to talk you can actually adjust how much like you can actually adjust the talk feature you can also adjust the classical bass mid-range treble as well you can actually adjust pretty much everything depending on how you want it which is pretty cool if I go to jazz it's pretty much just like everything else you can you can pretty much adjust like let's say if I want to listen to rock music at a certain bass or treble you can adjust it to the rest to that bass or treble or if you want to listen to pop and a certain bass or treble you can do with that you can do it like that as well now pretty much all of the radio stuff is about like what you would expect from any other radio station of course you also got your phone media you can, you can actually adjust like you can actually access your keypad you can actually see your voicemails, all the voicemails that you have, your most recent calls, contacts, and voice, and stuff like that or that you would regularly see in any other car. If, you, if, you, if your current car has this and you move over to this, you will see it's very easy to use. Of course, you also got your navigation. Of course, it lets you know what, like where you're facing with the compass as well. And then, of course, there's more messages and stuff like that. And I just realized my phone's about to die, so that means I won't really be able to go over. Sadly, I will not be able to go every single thing inside of this but i was able to go through think the things that most people are probably going to use whenever they are inside of this car you actually have a bunch of different power outlets inside of this car as well you actually got a reg you also got a regular car charger port and down here you also got a usb and USB C port down here at the very bottom of the front screen but that's not even the craziest part for that part we move on to the back seats now to wrap up the review we now we move on into the back seats and i must say the back seats they are pretty roomy. I got plenty of headroom, as you can see. Also got plenty of legroom. I got the seat positioned to about where I would sit, and I already and I'm six foot. And I'm six foot two, and I must say it's pretty comfortable back here. And of course, you do also have your dome lights, which work just like any other dome lights you expect to find. And then of course, we also got your um, climate control vents back here for the passengers to be cool, nice and cool. Those look just like any other car. Now here's the crazy thing, backseat passengers have access to literally everything. You also got two USB ports right here, and then you actually have a household outlet in the back of this car as well, which is really, really neat. And then of course you also have your regular car charger port as well. Between the seats, you also got a cup holder, you also got an armrest and cup holder right in between you guys, which is like what most people want to have in their car. And that pretty much wraps it up back here. So now that's pretty much as much as I will be able to go over in this car. It was slightly rushed and I'm very, very sorry, but that's still okay. One thing I do also really, really want to point out before I completely end this review, this car does actually have cool lights that actually you get display. One's actually right underneath this, this dashboard. It gives it a really cool looking futuristic side swipe look with the car on you barely noticeable but it looks really cool as well you also got one on the door handle as well as you can see i'm moving my hand around it you also got one inside of the uh door the door handle mount door handle section as well and so that's pretty much all that i have time for it i was about to review the 2018 chevy malibu like i said i went ahead and got it done now because it looks like we have a brand new replacement car coming soon and it's going to be a pretty cool one. Whenever that car does arrive, I will be sure to do a review on that car as well. Hopefully, I won't be able to have to rush it like I did this one. But anyway, guys, if you guys did enjoy, please make sure you guys go hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and also go ahead and go drop a like on this video to go support me in the channel. Also, guys, subscribe to all my other YouTube channels, and also go follow me on all of my social medias. They're going to all be linked in the description box down below. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching today's video. Peace out.